here to stop, please take your back to start the 2016-2017 school year. And the theme for this welcome back is called Act 77, the Student Centered Learning and Pathways, with a focus on music, art, physical education, and foreign language. Act 77 is a law passed in Vermont that the whole state is, we're finding our way. And what's going to happen in our presentation today is our middle school and high school students and staff are going to help to share with all of us what Act 77 is all about. So today you can sit back and enjoy the presentation. So you get the big picture, and I can't do my movements, but there is a regional group of 10 supervisor unions that sit on the southwest corner of Vermont who decided we're going to work together to do this work. In our district, we have an SPSU proficiency-based learning committee that just was formed last year. It has middle school and high school staff, students, parents, and community members. And we need to try to make sure that we understand what Act 77 is all about, and then find a way to share all that information with you. MAU Middle School and MAU High School also have their own proficiency-based learning teams that focus on what does a personalized learning plan look like? How are we going to implement proficiency-based graduation requirements? And how do we make learning student-centered? So the first part of the presentation today will be just what is Act 77 from the middle school and high school perspective. The second part of the presentation is a pleasure for me. When I was hired two years ago, one of my first conversations was with the high school art teachers. And, and I am so not an artist. And I was very upfront with them about that. But in the course of our conversation, and then my conversations that follow with music and physical education and foreign language, I realized they all really have this wonderful thing in common. They provide pathways for our students, rich pathways that excite our students. My own two children have been touched in one way or another by all four of those different areas. And so I'm pleased to be able to highlight their work today. So before we begin, I am going to ask all of our art, music, physical education, and foreign language teachers to please stand so we can celebrate you for a moment. the adults are trying really hard to stay out of this presentation. Really hard. We're, a little, we're, we're kind of control freaks, but we're working on it. So you'll notice some funky like button pushing going on up here, adults ducking and hiding. But please stay, stay focused on our students and please stay focused on the message from art, music, physical education, and foreign language. And we'll conclude our program today with a musical tribute by Lynn Sweet um, and Coral core students from all over the SBS field. Good morning. My name is Chris Barron. I'm a rising sophomore. Hi, I'm Lena Kordlik, and I am a rising senior at the high school. I'm Willow, and I'm also a rising senior at the high school. Alright, so what is Act 77, Flexible Pathways to Graduation? Any combination of high quality academic and experiential components leading to secondary school completion and post-secondary readiness, which may include assessments that allow the student to apply his or her knowledge and skills to tasks that are of interest to that student. Act 77 includes many opportunities for students to explore their individual interests through flexible pathways. These include traditional classroom learning, work-based learning, blended learning, online classes, dual enrollment, and early college. These programs are all active and available for students at the high school today. To begin this experience, last year a group of students and teachers formed the Explorers team and began to working on communicating school redesign. 
One of our first steps was to develop a slogan for our campaign. We focus grouped a variety of slogans with student groups throughout the school, and we decided upon Paving Your Own Path, which was designed with the help of Ms. Ackerman's graphic design students. The Explorers team created this video with the help of Sebastian Derby to help us in communicating Act 77 and school redesign to our school and greater community. 77. You may have heard those words tossed around recently, but what do they mean? In short, Act 77 is a law passed by the Vermont Legislature that helps provide new approach to education through access to personalized learning that will help each student become stronger, both as an individual and as a member of the community. Act 77 was adopted in 2013, and one of the main components is flexible pathways to graduation. And what that means is allowing students to kind of choose their own path into how they want to graduate. One of the ways that we are kind of setting this up is through the PLPs, which are personalized deep learning plans. And every student fills out a PLP with their interests um, and potential um, things that they want to explore, or things that they want to improve on. The PLP will be revised yearly, ensuring it evolves as students develop new strengths, interests, and passions. This means every student will plan a unique combination traditional school-based learning opportunities, career and technical education, internships, virtual learning, dual enrollment opportunities, and early college programs. But how may a student go about fulfilling their PLP? As many people know, the high school is adjacent to the Southwestern Vermont Career Development Center. Here, students are able to take classes in technical and career-oriented fields, such as medical professions, public safety, video production, and more. They had a lot of questions about the CDC, and pretty much all of them had no idea what the CDC was or that they could even take CDC classes. Of course, through the high school, there are many more opportunities available to students as well, all of which help provide students with a stable plan in education. I'm taking an online class in international business, which isn't offered at the high school. This gives me a good alternative to the typical classroom experience. Aside from the traditional classroom settings, students are able to gain knowledge and skills online, in the community, and in conjunction with local colleges. Hi, I'm Taylor Pinkman, I'm a senior at Mount Anthony. I've taken field study one, field study two, and this semester I'm doing my senior project. Um, I'm really excited to be project uh, was class and they were taking board and um, I really do feel it helps prepare uh, kids for college because you do your own learning. You get an outline uh, at the beginning of the semester and you are given the whole semester to uh, complete the project. I'm Thomas Tibbet. This past year during my senior year I took classes at CCV as a part of a program that CCV offers. Um, taking these classes prepared me for college in various ways. One way is it helped me out with time management. For instance, if I have a certain amount of homework that needs to be done by a certain class time, things like that sort, I'm glad that I was offered this program because it helped me establish a better future for myself. So I believe Act 77 is essential to success in the 21st century world that our students are going to be confronting. The opportunity in high school to do a job shadow, or do several job shadows, to see what it's like in the real world. The opportunity to do a field experience for an internship, or a senior project where you just research something that you're passionate about, is a huge opportunity for every student. And I think what Act 77 will do in the end is ensure that every single student gets what they need to be successful and meet their dreams while they are in high school, so that they leave high school better prepared to open the doors that they want to open. Well, I hope you enjoyed the film. And this year, our Youth Adult Partnership will seek new adult and student members as we continue educating our community about and implementing Act 77, Flexible Pathways to Graduation. Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Tim Payne. I'm the principal at the middle school, and uh, this is my partner. Chris Wire, associate principal at Anthony Middle School. So, uh, and I'm looking at the background, I'm seeing some of my folks a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> morning, John. All right. So, uh, we're talking about Act 77 today, uh, and this, this idea, the spirit really of the law is to have kids at the center, the self, uh, student centered learning. And so, the question, of course, as schools is going to be for us in supporting our kids is what does that, what does student centered learning look like? And Chris is going to help me out with that. So all students at the middle school, grades six through eight, complete a personalized learning plan, also known as a PLP. Uh, part of that personalized learning process, specifically for the seventh grade, is a partnership that we've developed with Bennington College. Um, I need to give credit to Amy Moriarty, even though she probably doesn't want me to because she was a huge part in developing that partnership with us. So basically we have students from the college coming in, working with students uh, at the middle school, um, talking about their pathway, how, do they got, how they got to where they are today, and helping students at the middle school establish their pathway to graduation and beyond. Um, today we have a group of students that are gonna come out and tell you a little bit about that uh, experience, and also uh, you'll hear a little bit from some other groups in the middle school who are, are also focusing on student-centered learning. Hope you enjoy. I'm Amy Moriarty of Mount Anthony Middle School, White Rocks team. Hi, I'm Noah Pembroke. I'm Carson Gordon. And I'm Cole Ferris. Very proud this morning to be with these gentlemen who are representing our school and our team. We have a few answers and questions for them. First question. How did the personalized learning experience help your view or impact your view of school and education? Uh, it helped me like take a hold of my education like when I was going to go to, if I ever, well I will go to college, but um, <laughs> it helped me like what, plan out what I want to do for my education, like what I want to major in and stuff like that. It helps us look at not just what we're doing now, but what we might do later in high school. <laughs> It helps me think about like what they were saying, what I'm going to do after school, and what I'm thinking about doing when I get done with school. Second question: What was your favorite part of the personalized learning process? Well, the the whole process was pretty fun, but the best part is when we when the Bennington College students came to our school and we got to talk to them about our POPs, and I I got to like connect with them, with my POP, and then they can like, see what they put in theirs. The Bennington College kids came to our school and told us their stories, and then some of us got one-on-one -on -one meetings with them about the POPs, and they told us what they put there in their lives to help us put what we do there. Um, my favorite part, at least for me, was the two one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings. Uh, I really like to just, it really helped me think about what I wanted to do, and it helped me more talk with somebody and see if I should put that there and I should put that there. And it helped me kind of figure out the PLP and what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. No wrong. They did it right. Thank you, gentlemen. Johnson and I am the student assistance counselor at Mount Anthony Union Middle School. Last year I had the privilege of working with an awesome group of students. Four of those students are with us today. Um, there are two who are in the audience, Madison Loftus and Janina Velasquez. Will you stand and, so the teachers can see you and the audience? And two students are with me on stage to share their personal experience with getting to the Y. I'll let them introduce themselves. Good morning again. Uh, my name is Noah Pembroke. Uh, I joined the Getting to the Y leadership team last fall. And not because it was looked good on my PLP, but because it was an opportunity to become a part of our school's first leadership team. 
I was one of 10 students who attended a six hour leadership training. Our group, our group learned the skills and gained confidence in using tools needed to analyze our school's youth risk behavior survey data. We recruited students to join our group and in January held a retreat at Bennington College. We trained the new recruits, teaching them skills we had learned during our fall training. Good morning, my name is Olivia Surnam. As Noah shared, our team conducted our data analysis during our retreat. Using math and communication skills, we worked in groups to analyze each section of the report, which consisted of over 70 questions. We voted to determine which information reflected our greatest areas of strengths and concerns. Using literacy skills, we wrote an executive summary of our finding. During our last GTY meeting, we shared our thoughts about our group experience. We all, felt, we all felt it had been very empowering. As a seventh grade student, I had never participated in the YRBS. Seeing some of our data was surprising in a concerning way for the entire group. We were not aware that in 2013, 20% of our students responded that they had seriously thought about suicide, or that 8% of our students reported that they had attempted it. In spite of those results, we discovered a lot to be proud of, and we were blown away by how much positive data we identified during the analysis. Data that 99% of our students attended physical education classes one or more days in an average school week, or that 95% of our students think it is wrong or very wrong for someone their age to smoke cigarettes. We had never heard about the Search Institute or the 40 developmental assets, but we discussed them and so much more. We learned about the importance of relationships and how they contribute to our success. We learned to think of our families, our school, and community as our web of support. We identified assets and resources available for students in our school. In our dialogue night in April, we asked parents and guests to add their ideas to our web of support. Where do we go next? Next week, I will begin my freshman year at MAUHS, where I will participate in sports, in sports, chorus, and a volunteer group. Next week, I will enter the 8th grade at Mount Anthony Union Middle School. I will continue as a member of the leadership team as we recruit new members and prepare to analyze our 2015 RBS data, which was released in July. We hope you enjoy our presentation. at Mount Anthony Middle School. As you've already learned, uh, we worked really hard this past year to provide opportunities and experiences to the students at the middle school that connected with the personalized learning plans. In April, we also provided um, or hosted a career fair. In preparation for the career fair, uh, we created a video to introduce students to career clusters, and here's a snippet of that video. Hey, Mr. Lee, um, can you tell me a little bit about what's uh, going on behind you today? Well, welcome to my construction site. So what we're doing today is we're building next-door condominiums for all kinds of families to come in and have fun, live together, swimming pools, dog parks, everything that you need. You can see a lot of work that's going on back here. All the boys are working hard, taking care of the equipment, moving things around the earth. And I know that you, you need to understand when you're working on a construction site, there's certain skills that you've got to have. You got to be able to read. That's very important. So you know what orders you fill with the things you need to build. You got to be able to do math because with math you got to have the blueprints. With the blueprints you got to build the buildings. So you have to know all of that stuff. So it's very important to know all of those things so we can get this done. Hmm. So uh, your career is uh, that's part of the uh, engineering, man manufacturing, and industrial technology career cluster. And uh, did you know that here on April 12th we're going to be having a career fair? with representatives from other careers that are part of that career cluster, including engineers, automotive services, mechanics, electricians, and of course. And of course, people working in my field, which is construction, which you can see going on behind me right now. So if you're to work with me there, I'll be there, sounds like a good time. What's it gonna be like? It's gonna be huge. <laughs> Uh, this is Mr. Payne, and uh, I just wanted to, if you ever ask yourself a 
question, what am I going to be when I grow up? Well, next week we're going to be having a career fair at the middle school, and uh, hopefully you can find some answers because you're going to have a chance to meet a lot of great people who are doing real jobs, and you can ask them questions. But you're going to need one of these. You're going to need a passport. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is you carry your passport around at the career fair, and you collect stamps. There are six areas. You need six stamps. I was going to ask you a favor. We have a lot of people visiting the building, and uh, as you walk around, it would really be helpful if you were polite and said please and thank you the whole time because we're welcoming them into our school and want to make a good impression. But again, this is really for you. This is our first career fair. We're really excited about it. We hope you enjoy the experience, and, uh, and thanks. Now, when am I supposed to turn this off? <laughs> will require that student personnel, students, and parents are familiar with the school-based course offerings, virtual learning opportunities, community work-based learning opportunities, and dual enrollment options. Traditional educational experiences are considered one pathway. Good morning, I'm Emily Alcliffe, the art teacher at Shaftesbury. Art is an experience. Art is a way to express ourselves. Art is a process of creativity. Art is a time to explore new materials. Art is an integration tool, a pathway, a way to collaborate with all the subjects in our students' learning. We can develop these skills and passions to support our students' knowledge and relate it to their interests for their future learning. The art teachers have spent the last two years interpreting the Common Core art standards to create a local curriculum document that defines what students should know and be able to do. We have four overarching standards. Creating, performing, presenting, producing, responding, and connecting. We provide students pathways to the arts to work towards these four overarching standards and standards from other curriculum areas. I myself have worked with many teachers collaborating, collaborating art within their curriculum. I recently worked with my fourth grade teachers on their Vermont unit and third grade teachers on their Native American unit. The arts created a pathway to integrate creative visuals for their units utilized during, during student art time. I am fortunate to have been able to work collaboratively with all my Shaftesbury teachers and know communication and teamwork are the key to creating many pathways to enhance our students' learning. We are excited to see a focus on the many school-based course offerings that give our students pathways into their learning and how we can work together to make these opportunities happen in all grades. Here's a high school student. Hi, I'm Kira Hansen. I'm a rising junior. When I was in elementary school, art was my favorite class. When I moved to Highland Hall, a small progressive elementary and middle school, art was always encouraged during free time. And once we got to the upper school, a parent who was an artist would come in every Friday and give us art lessons. Through the whole week, we all looked forward to Friday. Not just because of the weekend, but because Friday was art day. Since I've come to the high school, I've taken art classes galore. That's one way that art has been incorporated into my education, actual art classes. However, art is part of every student's education because everyone is asked to use art in each class. Making diagrams, maps, and short comics or drawings are common assignments given in all subjects. It is for this reason that it is important for all students to get a foundation in art. By having art incorporated into my education, I have developed skills that I use to succeed in all of my classes. And art education has helped me to be ready for any kind of education or assignment that may come my way. And, not to mention, I love art and can't imagine not having those classes in my schedule. Not only do they provide skills, but art classes are a refuge, a place for students like me who love art and see it as a part of their life, necessary to their sanity. Art classes are a place where students can develop their skills and express themselves in ways they couldn't in other academic arenas. All important things in every type of education. I, I 
didn't mean to leave out that I'm also the art teacher at Woodford Elementary School, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, now we leave you with a quote by artist Pablo Picasso. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once they grow up. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Susan Green. I'm a music teacher at Shaftesbury School. I, I paid them. <laughs> um, music is not a frill. Music education is a necessity. It develops both hemispheres in the brain, thereby increasing a student's ability, all students, to learn well. I stand here as living proof that music keeps kids in school because everybody plays, nobody sits on the bench. My name is Marjorie Rowan. I teach band here at the high school, and I don't. I pay them too. Okay. Um, I don't teach reading. I don't teach math. I don't teach science. But music includes all of those things, and what I do helps make pathways for what you do. And this video will let you see that. <laughs> Did you know that every time musicians pick up their instruments, there are fireworks going off all over their brain? On the outside, they may look calm and focused reading the music and making the precise and practice movements required. But inside their brains, there's a party going on. How do we know this? Well, in the last few decades, neuroscientists have made enormous breakthroughs in understanding how our brains work by monitoring them in real time with instruments like fMRI and PDT scanners. When people are hooked up to these machines, tasks such as reading or doing math problems each have corresponding areas of the brain where activity can be observed. But when researchers got the participants to listen to music, they saw fireworks. Multiple areas of their brains were lighting up at once as they processed the sound, took it apart to understand elements like melody and rhythm, and then put it all back together into unified musical experience. And our brains do all this work in the split second between when we first hear the music and when our foot starts to tap along. But when scientists turn from observing the brains of music listeners to those of musicians, the little backyard fireworks became a jubilee. It turns out that while listening to music engages the brain in some pretty interesting activities, playing music is the brain's equivalent of a full body workout. The neuroscientists saw multiple areas of the brain light up, simultaneously processing different information in intricate, interrelated, and astonishingly fast sequences. But what is it about making music that sets the brain alight? The research is still fairly new, but neuroscientists have a pretty good idea. Playing a musical instrument engages practically every area of the brain at once, especially the visual, auditory, and motor cortices. And as with any other workout, disciplined, structured practice in playing music strengthens those brain functions, allowing us to apply that strength to other activities. The most obvious difference between listening to music and playing it is that the latter requires fine motor skills which are controlled in both hemispheres of the brain. It also combines the linguistic and mathematical precision in which the left hemisphere is more involved with the novel and creative content that the right excels in. For these reasons, playing music has been found to increase the volume and activity in the brain's corpus callosum, the bridge between the two hemispheres, allowing messages to get across the brain faster and through more diverse routes. This may allow musicians to solve problems more effectively and creatively in both academic and social settings. Because making music also involves crafting and understanding its emotional content and message, musicians often have higher levels of executive function, a category of interlinked tasks that includes planning, strategizing, and attention to detail, and requires simultaneous analysis of both cognitive and emotional aspects. This ability also has an impact on how our memory systems work. And indeed, musicians exhibit enhanced memory functions, creating, storing, and retrieving memories more quickly and efficiently. Studies have found that musicians appear to use their highly connected brains to 
give each memory multiple tags, such as a conceptual tag, an emotional tag, an audio tag, and a contextual tag, like a good internet search engine. So how do we know that all these benefits are unique to music, as opposed to, say, sports or painting? Or could it be that people who go into music were already smarter to begin with? Neuroscientists have explored these issues, but so far they have found that the artistic and aesthetic aspects of learning to play a musical instrument are different from any other activity studied, including other arts. And several randomized studies of participants who showed the same levels of cognitive function and neural processing at the start found that those who were exposed to a period of music learning showed enhancement in multiple brain areas compared to the others. This recent research about the mental benefits of playing music has advanced our understanding of mental function, revealing the inner rhythms and complex interplay that make up the amazing orchestra of our brain.
Carmela Covage, and I teach Spanish here at the high school. As foreign language teachers, our goal is to help our students acquire the skills to communicate in another language and to understand cultures of other countries. Knowing a foreign language has many benefits. For example, it promotes tolerance, enhances your travel experiences, broadens your employment opportunities, boosts your brain health, gives you a better understanding of your native language, and builds self-confidence, just to name a few. So we have some students here today who have taken on the challenge of learning another language, and they would like to share with you uh, the impact that that has had on their education and their lives. Good morning, I'm Ann Salem, and I'm a junior here at the high school. I can honestly say that Spanish is one of the few classes I look forward to during this school day. To me, Spanish is more than just learning new vocabulary, conjugations, and grammar rules. While these three things are very important parts and steps towards becoming fluent in the language, I believe that learning culture holds a greater importance. Being exposed to different cultures is very important in today's world. Not only is learning Spanish grammar and verb conjugations beneficial to mastering the Spanish language, but it also has greatly benefited my, my understanding of the English language. Also, being fluent in a second language will open many more job opportunities for me in the future. For these reasons, and many more, I plan on continuing taking Spanish for the remainder of my high school career and furthering my education throughout college. Thank you. Um, bonjour. Um, je m'appelle Kira Hansen, still. Um, <laughs> one reason that learning French is something that is important to me is that learning it and French culture has helped me um, to have an interest in and understand the world in terms other than just in relation to America. I've been exposed to French media and discovered something I love that I might not have otherwise, French rap and hip hop. <laughs> Finding things that I love in French culture has made me more curious about other cultures as well, though French remains my favorite. Becoming sensitive to more cultures than just our own is important as it allows us to become more sensitive and active members of our communities both local and global. However, we do more in French class than just enjoy French culture. We also do this fun thing called conjugating verbs. I sound sarcastic, but I do actually think it's fun, as well as learn French grammar. By understanding French grammar, I've enhanced my understanding of English grammar. And the practice of learning something completely different has taught me how to truly apply myself to my education in other areas as well. Knowing French will prepare me for my future education as well as my future life in general. Knowing another language is a great skill to have, as it allows you more options on where you choose to live and study, as well as opening many other doors. Those are just a few reasons that I think language education prepares you for all education. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sophie Peacock. I graduated from Mount Anthony in 2014, and I'm currently going into my junior year at St. Michael's College with a major in Spanish and a minor in Applied Linguistics. The foreign language department here at Mount Anthony greatly helps me prepare uh, myself for the academic demands which I have been faced with these past two years. In my AP Spanish class, we practiced our speaking skills by recording ourselves while we talked about various topics, forcing ourselves to step out of our comfort zone and apply the grammar and vocab we have been studying since middle school to effectively communicate on the spot. The use of technology in the classroom also helps prepare myself for college courses. We were given a weekly assignment to communicate with native Spanish speakers from a website for language learners and had topics we discussed with them and later would share our findings in class in Spanish. I made mistakes with natives, I stepped out of my comfort zone, but they helped me become familiar with the language through this form of immersion, which led me to be more confident in Spanish upon graduating. From this website, I made acquaintances with whom I have continued practicing and have been able to learn about other Hispanic cultures and dialects. The Spanish Honor Society also gave us the opportunity to teach Spanish to elementary students, which ultimately has helped me decide what I'm going to college for, to teach Spanish and English as a second language. I encourage teachers to give their students activities which are interesting yet different from the traditional textbook exercises, pushing them to advance in that area in order to ready them for graduation and post-secondary education. Thank you. Coming together is a beginning, keeping together
together as progress, working together as success. And I think today we've highlighted the wonderful work that can happen when we collaborate with students and staff. And I'm gonna leave this part of the program before I turn it over with a little quote from Willing to be Disturbed by Margaret Wheatley. As we work together to restore hope to the future, we need to include a new and strange ally, our willingness to be disturbed. Our willingness to have our beliefs and ideas challenged by what others think. No one person or perspective can give us the answers we need to the problems of today. Paradoxically, we can only find those answers by admitting we don't know. We have to be willing to let go of our certainty, certainty and expect ourselves to be confused for a time and I hope that we can enjoy being a little confused together as we find our way with Act 77. Thank you, and I'm gonna turn this over now to Lynn Sweet, the choral director at the high school, who has many students from all over the SDSU that are going to wrap, bring everything together for us. year in collaboration with all of the singers in the SVSU uh, elementary middle and high school we put on a fantastic concert out on our football field out here um, over 450 singers on the bleachers and well over I would guess 2,000 people in the audience blankets and baskets and great it was really really fun the perfect music in my mind to start off this school year before I begin, I do want to thank these kids. I had no idea as of 9 o'clock this morning if I was going to have two singers or ten singers, and all of these kids took one of their mornings that they have left of their summer to come and perform for you. So thank you guys so much. to you the words of the first song that they're going to sing just in case the audio is not clear for you. The words are teachers and parents, governments and schools, please take me seriously, give me tools. My young heart believes what you tell, so teach me, teach me well. Many of the things that make up our individual personalities are part of us when we were first born. The, there are many more things, however, that we learn as we grow. Naturally, since children don't know everything when they are born, they must be taught. All of us rely on adults to teach us what we need to know. Parents and teachers are the adults who affect our growth and development most. The more, the more adults are aware of the critical nature of their roles in our development, the more they can do to help. Confidence, pride, self-worth, and self-respect must be carefully taught to all children by adults. When children are taught well, they have a better chance of happiness through their lives.
instruction from them. And I did want to point out that I have several kids that are actually graduates that came back today to sing for you. Well, how many of you are heading off to college very soon? Yeah, thank you. So obviously, because it says so on our shirts and on the picture behind you, the show is called Proud. So the kids are going to preview a little bit of that. We're going to sing our, the final song. Again, the words are, I am proud of who I am, proud of what I am, proud of where I'm going, proud of what I'm doing. My life is my life. I have the power to be. I can reach my own brass ring. Do you know what that means? Look it up on, about a carousel. And pull it for me. It is up to each of us to try and be the best that we can be. We can, we can grow, we can learn, and we can teach every day for the rest of our lives. All we have to do is try. We are each equipped with special qualities that no one can take from us. We are each in blend of special elements that no one else in this whole world has. When we believe in ourselves, we can do anything. <laughs> when we believe in ourselves, we are proud. I am proud of who I am. Thank you for your commitment to the children of the Southwest Vermont Supervisory Union. It is because of each of you that we are able to imagine the possibilities. Have a great year.
they said, have a great year.